Hey, welcome back to our chessboard application. In this video, we're going to create some methods that will allow us to determine which piece is on the board and what are the next legal moves. So let's create a function or a method called mark next legal moves. This will determine which moves on the board are the next place that the piece can go. So we need to know two things to start this application. We need to know where you are. So let's call that the current cell. The second parameter is what kind of piece you are. So we'll call that a string. And in the first case, we're going to have the string be always the word knight. So we're going to work on the knight first, since it's the most complicated of the pieces. So I'm going to put some comments in my code so I know where I'm going. First of all, I want to clear the board to make sure that if previous turns were done, there's nothing as far as data from those. Second, I'm going to find all the legal moves that are on the board and mark them. Just set the cell property to uh, legal. All right, so in step one, this is going to involve two for loops. So I'm going to visit every row and every column, and so this will be 64 different uh, squares that we're going to visit. I'm going to set each square to be false for the two properties, the two Boolean properties. Next le legal move is the one property, and currently occupied is the other. So this basically clears the board. So let's go down to the uh, second part now. I'm going to set up a switch statement. So that way I have multiple options for whatever string that the user sends me. So the first case is the knight piece. And so we'll use a case knight colon. And then we'll put some more code in here later. We'll also do an item for the king, and then for the rook, for the bishop, and the queen. So I'm going to do these in um, the first case is the most difficult, the knight. It's a strange chess piece. And then we'll go from simpler to the more complex. So the knight is the most complex, and then the king is probably the easiest. The king can just move one in any direction. The rook is a horizontal, vertical. Bishop is diagonal. And the queen is a combination of rook and bishop. So we'll do the queen last. So think about what we want to do if we want to mark the next legal move. I'm going to set the property of an item on the grid, so a certain cell. So the uh, property that we're going to be interested in is called legal next move equals true. However, I don't want to mark the current cell as the legal next move, so I'm going to adjust this slightly. So think of how the knight moves. Let's say it can go over two and up one. So let's do a plus two and a plus one. So that will take care of one square for the next legal move. So the other options are similar, combinations of twos and ones. So I'm going to paste in several of these until I have di eight different moves. So through this process here, I want to have all possible combinations of a plus two, minus two on in a one direction and a plus one, minus one in the other. So follow a pattern and you'll have yourself uh, eight different squares. Now this will require some testing when we're done, of course, to see if I've actually created the uh, pattern like I wanted it to. Now notice here I'm making mistakes here on my syntax. So after each of these different uh, possible strings, I'm going to put in a colon instead of the semicolon. There, the errors go away now. Okay, so it looks like I have the uh, case for the knight set. So I'm going to leave the other uh, cases for you later. You're going to be doing knight, rook, bishop, and queen on your own. But the, since the knight is somewhat complicated, we'll give those answers away. Now the next phase and the next video that we're going to do is we're going to print the actual results. So we've calculated some, some legal moves, but we haven't printed anything yet. So think about where you would print. It goes in the program CS file. The reason why I would say it has to go into here is because this is the interface for the user. Anytime you're printing, it should be either on the form of a Windows app, or it could be a web page, or in this case that we're going to make, it's a console app. So don't try to print anything inside of your model. So your model is your board and your cell. Their only job is to store data. Printing is for somebody else. And so we'll do printing in the next video.